Hello and welcome to Monkeys with Fire. How is everybody this evening? I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good day. So then, we have got another Tabletop Tuesday. And in fact, this is the last one of 2018. Wow, this year has absolutely flown by. We have seen some amazing games over the past few months. And in fact, what we're going to be doing tonight for the first part is revisiting one of the most awesome games that we've seen this year, which was the Old Hellfire Club. Now, hopefully you guys will remember it. It was from several months ago. And this is a card game set in Victorian London, where we are members of the infamous secret society of the Old Hellfire Club trying to cobble together a few pennies so that we can buy ourselves a uh, quick drink of gin uh, to uh, ease our day. So for the Old Health Fire Club, for the print and play version that is currently available to download for free from Board Game Geek, uh, the designer, James Frew, has going to be releasing a set of festive cards to add to the game. We do have the designer, James Frew, available to talk us through these cards. All right then, so let us bring up onto the screen these festive cards for the old Hellfire Club. And here we go. So do you want to just give us a bit of a, an overview on these cards, Jamie? Yes, absolutely. Um, so for those of you who um, who haven't had a chance to have a look at the Old Hill Fire Club, um, what we've basically got is a, um, a storytelling game in which all of the players, um, as previously mentioned, are members of the Old Hill Fire Club, a great and illustrious secret institution that's protected the Empire since time immemorial, that's now fallen on hard times, and you're now all down and out in the back-end London pub just telling the story of your uh, of your greatest adventures in the vain hope that somebody might just buy you a drink for your troubles. And so in order to make the game, I did a load of research um, into the strangest corners of Victorian life. Um, the deeper that I dug, the more I found out that the strangest thing that the Victorians did was probably Christmas itself, and nothing got stranger than their Christmas cards. Uh, they were complete lunatics. Um, and so I decided, just just for a little Christmas treat, that I'd make a little expansion of the game, just just to enjoy over the festive period, uh, in which you get to um, get to weave into your story um, all of the things that the Victorians thought of as festive. Um, now, this includes a really bizarre array um, of items. Apparently, the Victorians found dead robins to be incredibly festive, um, or giant wasps, or children being stolen, including by Santa Claus. Um, it's really just the most bizarre set of stuff that I've ever come across. So the imagery on these cards that are part of this sort of festive expansion, were these actual Victorian Christmas cards or are they just thematic for the Christmas season? Every single one is taken off a, Vic a genuine Victorian Christmas card. Um, and I'd love to say that these were actually, for, for the Victorian sake, that these images were hard to find, but they really weren't. There are thousands of these things out there, <laughs> I really suggest. If you've got a moment, just type Victorian Christmas card into Google. You will be disturbed and hilarified uh, in equal measure. All right, well, should we take a look at each of these cards then? And... Um... Yeah, I, I, I'm, t I'm, a, I'm slightly terrified with some of them, <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's brave on through. Okay, so we've got an insult card here, which is ass. <laughs> that one is probably the tamest of all the cards that I could come across. Quite simply, this is, is the traditional Christmas donkey. Gentle and kind, about as biblical as you can, to be perfectly honest, probably the most still Christmassy thing that you can find. Um, the fact that he's in a wreath is it's a little morbid, but then it what says Christmas more than a dead donkey. Well, that's it. It, it kind of looks as if the, the donkey is a plaque upon a wall. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so. Uh, but yeah, 
that's definitely disturbing. So we've, we've started off with that. Okay, this one has me absolutely intrigued. I want to know the story on this one. So this is Tea Time, a finely roasted cat. <laughs> okay, this is probably the most disturbing of the picture that I found. Um, for some reason, pe people or animals eating other anthropomorphized people or animals was a really big Christmas thing. So very, very, very weird and disturbing. Um, but the, the, the idea of mice having their deliberation um, and during which they ate the cat uh, is again a festive thing <laughs> so for, for the one day in the year the mice get their own back on the cats <laughs> yep and it's it's not it's not a day of goodwill to all to all men and cats no you eat your enemy what could be more uh, more fitting wow okay so we then move on to the one that you did mention which is the dead robin Ah, oh, the dead Rob. Now this is... I, I wish I could say that I, I just came across one of these images, but it seemed to be a Christmas obsession for the Victorians. There are hundreds and hundreds of Christmas cards which just feature dead birds on the front. Um, now, apparently, um, the, the theory goes behind it that... that it was Victorian to think of yourself as being lucky and how fragile life can be and to, to give thanks Christmas time. I really think, think that they could have come up with a better image for this than, than a dead Robin. <laughs> I, I, I am absolutely mortified by, by this imagery. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> but, but then of course, very thematic for the next game that we might be playing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Nicely fitting. <laughs> yes, yes. I've got a nice little, little drop in there. Okay, so we've got the crime card, and this is in reference to witchcraft. The bizarre thing about um, about laws, as, as if you've uh, been following, you know, every single crime that's on every single card in the Hellfire Club is a real crime. In fact, on the cards, it's also stated the act that outlawed that particular um, particular activity in, in Britain, and all of them are capital to be killed for them. Uh, witchcraft in the UK, I'm somewhat ashamed to say, was still a crime well into, I think it was about the 1940s. Um, so, <laughs> a very long time. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I just loved the picture. Is, um, yes, it's an awesome <laughs> picture of the uh, all these animals <laughs> with the, the rabbit in the middle. <laughs> so we then go to a place. Now, I know the book, but uh, The Island of Dr. Moreau? Ah, uh, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Um, it's... Those who don't know about this, The Island of Dr. Moreau uh, is... A, uh, one of H.G. Wells' early um, science fiction stories about a professor who uh, escaped to, a, to an island and then decided to start breeding um, animal-human hybrids uh, and slowly society falls apart as a result. Um, this one was more inspired by the, the card because it was just the strangest picture that I've ever found on a Christmas card. It, it simply said, Merry Christmas, and underneath there was a be summer beach scene on which insects were dancing with frogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Snowyak's just asking, are they dancing? To which you've said yes. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. <laughs> I've not got the faintest idea what this symbolises, and uh, quite frankly, I don't want to know. <laughs> and this is a Christmas card? <laughs> this is a Christmas yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I am somewhat speechless. <laughs> that is unbelievable. It, it's worrying. It's worrying. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to Peril. And I think most people might have heard of this one. This is Krampus. Yes, so a fun yes. old time figure brought from Germany by Prince Albert. 
indeed. So people may may already know this, but pretty much all of uh, modern British Christ, uh, Christmas um, traditions are in fact German, and they were brought over um, by Prince Albert when he was when he married Queen Victoria. So Christmas trees are German. German Christmas markets are obviously German, um, and so. This is another figure who didn't quite catch on as much as he should have done. He's huge on the continent, but Krampus, think of him as the anti-Santa. Yeah, um, he will come nice. a few nights before Christmas and steal evil children, rather than waiting for Father Christmas to bring him some coal. Fantastic. I like the sound of Krampus. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's awesome. <laughs> Let, let's have Krampus Day. <laughs> oh, Krampus Day. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Leo from Back Strange MUA was straight on on target there, saying that he's the anti Santa. <laughs> he is absolutely. And um, what greater peril can there be to Christmas? All right. Now again, for you telling me that these are all Christmas card imagery, this yes. is so disturbing. Yes, I am. Uh, this is the polar bear. Ah, oh, the polar bear. Yeah, again, this one's just weird. This is genuinely a Christmas card. All of these images, if you just type them into type, type Victorian Christmas card and then polar bear or whatever it is, you will find them. This is simply a picture of a uh, an Arctic explorer being attacked by a polar bear with the word Merry Christmas underneath it. I <laughs> it, <laughs> why? <laughs> but again, the Victorians saw this as Christmassy. And to be honest, who are we to argue? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Snow Rock's suggesting that maybe the polar bear is hugging the explorer and it's all, all in, you know, goodwill to all men. <laughs> Precisely, precisely. Wow. Perhaps the polar bear is a, a Lapland guardian. Who can say? I understand the robin. I understand the polar bear to some degree. And the cat, maybe. But giant wasps, I really don't understand this one at all. <laughs> At last, at last, this is one that we don't have to, strictly speaking, um, blame the Victorians on. I'm delighted to say, because technically, very technically, this Christmas card is French. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and seemingly the French of, of the time saw uh, giant children attack, being attacked by giant wasps as Christmassy. And so, yes, this is simply a picture of, um, of children being attacked by giant wasps with the words Joyeux Noël underneath. And what is more Christmassy and French than that? Wow. Okay, if, if anybody is on the channel who is from France who wants to comment, <laughs> feel free to do so. Now is your chance. Okay. So we're moving on to the iconic imagery uh, of Christmas. Um, that is, of course, Father Christmas. Indeed. In now, a lot of people will probably think that uh, will, will, will have heard the, the story that, um, that Father Christmas's red and white costume, um, it was invented by Coca-Cola. Um, and from uh, urban legend, it's, it's simply not true. Um, the, it, this, this, the, the red and white um, pajama suit has been has been about well into the Victorian era, um, although it's it's something that just seems to get glossed over. What also gets glossed over is that when um, it's, it's the other side of Father Christmas. Um, which was that he used to be seen as someone who, much like Grandpa, stole children as well. So if you think about it, your odds as a child for Christmas are extremely poor because you've got <laughs> an entire Krampus, the anti-Santa, after you. And you've got 50% of the bad side of Santa after you as well. So you've really only got a quarter of a chance <laughs> of surviving Christmas, which possibly explains why the Victorians were so hot on morals and brudity um, at the time, because they were just terrified of making it into the new year. So do you hear that, kids? Behave. <laughs> <laughs> because Krampus and Santa are out to get you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 
Oh, so Snowyak is saying, and I'm going to completely ruin this. Sinterklaas? Yeah, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. The Dutch Absolutely, Santa. yes. And so he has a similar MO. <laughs> he does indeed. I spent a fantastic um, St. Nicholas's Day in in, um, in Holland about 10 years ago. You have fabulous traditions, and I just loved it. So congratulations on having an awesome Christmas. Okay, so it's a, lo- a long A, so it's Sinterklaas. <laughs> because everybody knows I ruin every single name that I uh, <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 All right, then. And so this one, I can't believe for one second this actually was a Christmas card. I think you're just doing this to try and score points on the channel. But this, of course, <laughs> is a servant. I, I, what, what can I say? If I'm totally honest, the answer is both. Uh, <laughs> this is a Christmas card. Um, and monkey butlers, uh, well, quite frankly, I, I the instant I saw the image, I couldn't help resist. Who doesn't want a monkey butler uh, when they get right down to it? It's it's just the perfect the perfect pinnacle of society. Now I, I don't know whether I'm going to get a monkey butler or I am the butler for everybody who comes <laughs> onto this channel. I'm not quite sure of the positioning on this one. <laughs> But that's awesome. It's, it's brilliant to say. Although I will, although these ten cards are, are the um, the Christmas edition, um, there are a couple of Christmas nods in the main deck as well. Um, so there is a a card in there called the Rubber Duck, which is one of our main uh, our, our, our spotlight cards, um, and. The, rub, the rubber duck card actually features a picture called the goose herd, um, which is a woman who looks like she's just had the fright of her life um, and is rocking back and forth in a field trying to take her geese to London. Um, and that is how fresh meat was transported uh, in those days for festivals. You literally walked the animal live to the city where you were going to kill it. Um, but the really awful thing um, about, about goose herding is that in order to stop the the geese's feet um, from becoming injured and destroyed, they would dip them in tar, hot tar, before they started the march um, oh. from from Norwich, where they started, um, so that they had little scalding hot Wellington boots melded to their feet uh, before they started the walk. That's just... That's just cruel. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, a death march to someone's Christmas dinner table um, is bad enough. Um, but yeah, adding adding scorching hot tar to it is, is bad. It's really bad. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm quite traumatised now. <laughs> <laughs> and thus you have experienced Victorian Christmas. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Okay, so, of course, um, for those who have who are not familiar with the game, then the game, uh, the old Hellfire Club, has not yet launched. It will be launching on Kickstarter. When will that be, Jamie? That is the 9th of April. So, the, the 9th of April. So, between yep. now and then, we will be featuring the game again on the channel because we did have a raucously good time when we played it. Uh, <laughs> and it was just you and I, but our intentions being is that we're going to actually have a larger uh, group playing the game the next time we do it. Uh, and then, of course, we will have... Uh, the actual launch in April. But of course, for those who can't wait until then, there is a print and play version, yes? Absolutely, there is. 50% of the entire game is being given away for free for you to try out for yourselves. Uh, It's all available in a downloadable on BoardGameGeek. Just put the old file club into their search um such function and it will come up and it's in the file section and it's just there so um if you've, if you've got a um a day or two left in the office um before christmas um why not abuse the printer <laughs> <laughs> yes your boss won't mind it's absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, but to make things slightly easier exclamation old hellfire club in the chat and that will give you the direct link and away you go so you could be doing it right now all right, well, excellent. So thank you so much, Jamie, for uh, explaining the cards to us. Um, as I say, that's a unique perspective 
uh, on Victorian Christmas, one which I shall uh, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad and I enjoyed it at the same time. 